the siege defenses at King's Landing are being erected. The Kingsguard Knight Sir Eric, still stinging from what he believes to be his identical twin brother's betrayal, strolls around the battlements, taking special notice of the enormous, dragon-spearing scorpion erected atop the city walls. The previously carefree Egon seemed to have grown more thoughtful following his unannounced coronation inside the Red Keep, until Otto points out that, if he keeps trying to be the decent thing, everyone will expect the same treatment. He appears to be trying to be a decent father to his heir, ye Harry's, and a decent ruler to his people. He offers to return a struggling shepherd's tithe flock and promises money to the blacksmiths whose labor will keep his soldiers armed. Heaven forbid. There is unrest brewing elsewhere in the keep. Under the wrath of her icy cold adviser, Lord Larry Strong, a licensed makes a feeble attempt to break free from an affair with the moody, royal fancier Sir Kristen Cole. Being the most vocal supporter of moderation among the Green contingent, a license continues to hope that a full-scale conflict could be averted. The last thing she wants is to make a mistake, like getting caught in bed with the Kingsguard captain. However, as the people of Westeros have frequently discovered, both the royal heart and the royal loins have their own desires. The voice of restraint on the black side is Queen Rhaenyra, whose emotional connection to her erstwhile ally turned fierce adversary is emphasized in a beautiful sequence that alternates between the burning of Lucery's corpse and a licensed setting lights in remembrance of the dead in the sept at King's Landing. Rhaenyra has no idea that her expectations for a non-violent resolution are going to come crashing down. Demon embarks on a journey of revenge after making the infuriating statement. I want Eamon Targaryen. Based on details from his previous lover and the former White Worm, Myceria, he finds two plausible criminals, a gold cloak and a rat catcher, and gives them money and orders to kill Eamon by any means necessary. And if they are unable to locate him, that question, however, remains unaddressed. The next step is to assess how badly this plan will fail. It was almost painfully nervous to watch the assassins stealthily move through opulent royal chamber after elegant chamber, wondering who they would meet first and how brutal the confrontation would be. Looking back, it was clear, Helena, the child's mother, and Egon's love for tiny Yeheris had been clearly indicated earlier in the episode, as had both of their shocking mental and emotional states. The option that the murderers presented to Sophie seemed excessively drastic we had previously seen a kid murdered. However, the ramifications are crystal clear. This spells war.